Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to the channel. In this video, we are going to do this X pattern accent wall. At first glance, it might look a little bit intimidating, but in all actuality, it's not that bad. Lots of tips and tricks to show you in this video to give your clients or yourself a really high quality product that's gonna hold up for the long haul. Let's dig right in. The first tip that I have for you guys is to use SketchUp or some other computer program to get your angles. You'll still have to get your length on site, but it really speeds things up to have your angles done from the computer. The first thing I did was took my bottom board width and cut that. I used a one by six and ripped it to the same width of the baseboard, which is five and a quarter. And I marked on that board where all of my biscuit locations needed to be based off of the drawing that I brought with me. After marking out the locations for my biscuits on the one by six, I went ahead and ran those slots using my cordless Makita biscuit joiner, which I'll talk more about as we go on. It's absolutely essential to use biscuit joinery when joining two one by together flush. If you don't, the joints will come apart with seasonal movement over time and crack the paint and be ugly. Now that we've got our biscuit slots ran on the top of this board, we'll go ahead and position it in place and nail it off. Before we can move forward, there's a really important board we need to make. It's kind of like a pattern. It's going to help us do our layout as well as take our measurements. So what I want to do is I want to make cuts on a piece of one by four that will match the cuts that will go into the end corner pieces uh, and this will make a little bit more sense in a minute but this piece is really going to help with layout as well as taking measurements. I really don't know what to call this board so I'm just going to call it our pattern reference board. So we're going to use this pattern reference board for layout as well as getting measurements and on the end of it we're going to have two different angled cuts that need to be made exactly into the center. So I'm going to start by marking the center line on this piece of one by using my double square. Now the end of this board will go down into the corners. So I'm going to have two different angles on this. I'm using my cheat sheet to know what those angles are. One is 60.6 and the other is 29.4, which both add up to 90 degrees. I'm making sure that I'm cutting those angles so that they intersect each other exactly on that center line. As you can see here, our two different angles intersect exactly on my center line. And again, you can see the angles that I have notated on my cheat sheet. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to want to pull a measurement from the very corner point and we're going to cut it at a nice round number. I used 30 and then we're going to use this board to help us pull our measurements in the future. We'll want to make a bunch of chalk lines on this wall and to start the layout process we'll use the board we just made and we'll push it into the corner and get some nice pencil lines on the top and bottom of the board in all of the different corners. To chalk the lines for our layout we'll use a chinois chalk line. I love this chalk line because it has an actual point on the end of it makes it really easy just to stick it into drywall so you don't have to worry about using a nail and then hooking the end of the chalk line onto a nail. This works much better. The affiliate link will be in the video notes below. Be sure to use those links. It helps support the channel. If you haven't picked up on it yet, with this design, all of these lines carry through all the way across. Uh, it's kind of a cool symmetrical design so the layout is just a matter of chalking a whole bunch of different lines that all go completely across the wall. The way to do the rest of this layout after we have our main X which is the center X we'll then do a 12 inch offset and chalk lines running parallel 12 inches offset from that main X. It might be a little bit tough to see, but now we've got chalk lines running all the way in every which direction across this wall, but that gives us our layout and I can pull measurements and see where everything needs to be having these chalk lines on the wall now. 
Unfortunately, I do have a receptacle that is in the way. As you can see by the blue chalk lines, it's landing right in the middle of my 1x4. So I'm using a dull chisel to break the box apart, which is what I typically do. And then I've got to, de got to determine how much slack I have in the wire. I was able to release one of the staples, which gave me a little bit more slack, and uh, kind of figure out how far I'm able to move this over. In this case, I had plenty of room. I was able to move it over about 12 inches. This actually happens fairly often for me that I need to move uh, a switch box or a receptacle. So I keep a handful of these remodel boxes in my van at all times. Uh, it makes so that you, number one, can just completely remove it, move the receptacle and be done with it. And number two, sometimes you need the box as a template when cutting it into a mantle or something like that that I might be installing. Having the exact size is really handy. So here I'm just using the multi-tool to cut out this drywall really accurately. It pays to be careful and that'll make sure that the receptacle remodel box is going to fit nice and snug and not move around. So we'll pull the wire through and insert it into our remodel box and then very carefully just simply push the remodel box into place making sure that the plastic wings are folded down. Then just push it in and carefully with your screw gun, uh, tighten it until you feel tension and you're all done. Now, if you wanna be a successful carpenter, you have to be able to cut things accurately the first time and not spend all day walking back and forth to the saw tweaking cuts. So this is where our pattern reference board is going to pay dividends for us. Being that we cut it exactly 30 inches long, all I have to do is put my pattern reference board into each corner and mark a line. I know that that line is gonna be 30 inches from the end of the corner. So then after I've marked the line coming down 30 inches from both corners, I can drive a nail into the wall and pull my tape and get a measurement from that. Now in this whole accent wall, I was able to cut each piece and I didn't have to tweak any cuts. That is the key to making money in this business, being able to cut accurately the first time. Now we're back to the saw. So I know what my overall measurement is, so I'll trace the lines from my pattern reference board and make the cuts on one end of the board, then pull my overall measurement and mark that overall measurement on the other end. Then I'll take my pattern reference board and again, trace those lines onto the end, other end of the board we can make those cuts and then we have the exact length. I did cut this just a hair long to ensure that I could snap it in place and have a nice tight fit. Because this is the X center board, I will have other boards intersecting with this at the center of the wall. So I need to mortise the biscuit slots where those boards will intersect also. Sanding is an extremely important part of the process to getting crisp work after the painter hits it. Um, it's really the carpenter's job to hit this stuff with a sander to give it a really nice surface. This material is pretty good, but it's far cry from perfect. And sanding it with a hard pad and 120 get grit really takes it to the next level. Now it's time to go ahead and install our piece. The first thing we want to do is insert our biscuit and glue. That way we have that ready to go whenever we want to snap this into place. Just a healthy amount of glue and a number 10 biscuit will ensure that this joint stays intact for the long haul and paints up really nice and smooth. Obviously the biscuits help with alignment also. Keeping the two faces in plane will mean that it's only going to require light sanding a little bit later. Now, whenever you go to install this with a long board like this, many of you already know this, but if it's a tight fit, simply bend out the center of the board, which will reduce the length and that will allow you to snap the board into place. And here I'm going to use my favorite stud finder to nail this board off, obviously making sure that I've got the board running true with my chalk lines. Uh, love this stud finder. I'll link it in the notes below. Obviously purchasing through the links helps support the channel. All 
I already know what my exact angle cuts are, but I need to determine the exact length of what these cross members are going to be. So we're going to use our pattern reference board again, AKA the money maker in order to get these measurements. Um, to do this, I'm simply tacking it on the wall into the corner. And then I know that that is 30 inches long, so I can just pull measurements and get my exact length on these next two boards. Here we are back at the saw. I have my overall length, so I simply need to describe the end of my board again, make my cuts. Then I'm actually going to go ahead and nail my pattern reference board onto the long length of two by. What this is going to allow me to do is then just to bump my tape measure up against the end of the board and then I can mark the exact length as I took the measurements from the wall. So this should be a really accurate method to mark and cut these pieces and make sure that they fit the first time. Again, it's all about saving those footsteps to make money in this business. I just cut these angles. Uh, I cut the angle just based off of what my SketchUp drawing says. Check out how close to perfect this is. This is why you use SketchUp. Piece number one. Look at that. Boom. Beautiful. And piece number two. Perfect. Now we're on to our final series of cuts. And for this, I made another pattern reference board with the angle cuts that I need. And I'm simply marking the pattern reference board in place. And then I can use my tape measure to pull the measurements off of it. Take those measurements to the saw and cut the remaining pieces that I need.
Now, if you've been following this channel for very long at all, you know that I absolutely love pinch dogs. Uh, for glue joints to be strong, they require clamping pressure. So a pinch dog is designed essentially like a nail in the shape of a wedge that are joined together in the shape of a U basically. So the further that you drive the pinch dog in, the more that it pinches the material and it squeezes that glue out, provides clamping pressure to the joint, and just in general, it does something that no other tool will do. If you can think about it, doing this joinery on the wall in place, you would have to come up with some apparatus of clamps or whatever, and it just would be a real pain. These pinch dogs are just super handy. So another great tool, link in the notes below. I like to use the two inch version, but hope you guys have enjoyed this video. It was a fun little accent wall to do. Drop a comment below, let me know what you think, and we'll see you on the next video.